for the Tide. They keep it pretty in check here. It's a different lineup certainly than a year ago, replacing four starters. The early headliner for Alabama, the transfer from North Dakota State, Grant Nelson, 15 points a game, all SEC first team in the preseason. He has been absolutely outstanding. On the flip side, for the Oregon Ducks, they've had to change a few things up. Hasn't been the easiest ride for them, and so they've continued to kind of tweak it. But Jesse Zarzula has stepped in, didn't play in that Montana game, has started the rest of them as one of the guards. Hustar joins him. Dana Altman done a lot of tinkering here for UO. The biggest reason why the injuries, once again, a storyline for the Ducks since these last couple of years, they have really almost felt snake bit here, but you're missing some big pieces. And Folly Dante out with a knee, the talented freshman Mookie Cook out with an ankle, and Nate Biddle out with a wrist. And these are months long injuries. As deep and as talented as Coach Altman's team is, that's a lot to overcome. Absolutely. The, the, the big thing, too, there is that you lost two seven footers. So it's really going to change the way they're going to have to play really puts some additional pressure on guys like Mohamedou Diawara and the remaining front court players. Right now, leading rebounder for UO is a freshman. Very good one, though, in Kwame Evans Jr. Two teams looking to split the trip and go one and one here on Florida's Gulf Coast. SEC, Pac-12, one final time. Let's do it here. It's Alabama and Oregon. Sears starts up top here for the Ducks. Sears takes to the rack and scores. Opening one for Alabama along Mark Sears. With Sears for you, gets going downhill, gets into that paint, and wreaks havoc either at the rim or finding open teammates. And he opens. And Ducks defense going to have its hands full with Sears. Great speed, a quick retort. Stays here with Bama. Mark Sears was absolutely phenomenal in the game against Ohio State. 36 points. From the wing, just short. Sears, 36 minutes, 17 points. He was awesome. Played a ton as Nate Oates wants to shorten the lineup as much as he can for Alabama. But understanding this is the back end of a back-to-back, -back. he acknowledged in his midweek press conference, might need some extra. Evans three is no good. Three. Iron long rebound collected by Ryland Griffin. Nelson rolls. They find him. Grant extra pass and a foul. That's the Pringle from the line for shot. About some of the greatness of Nelson there as he catches it in traffic, but has a presence of mind to find an open teammate on the baseline and gets the dump down. And now free throw. Nate Oates had so much praise for this guy at the free throw line right now, noting that Nick's gotten so much better these last two weeks, particularly his ball screen defense. Right now it's his free throw shooting on display. He hits his first. Pringle's just a different kind of athlete. So well put together, great length, great athleticism. When you see a kid like that, you see an NBA player. And he gets them both. That's been an Alabama project for Nick Pringle. He was tweaking that free throw form towards the end of last season, come tournament time. And so far, so good for the mechanical shift for Nick Pringle. Blocking foul. Aaron Estrada, the guilty party, first for the tie. Running through the screen there for Estrada. Easy call for ref. You love that hard screen if you're rooting for UO. Working the perimeter. 
Able to cash it in. Tracy hit a long two. Tracy again. Running the floor here. Violet Griffin tried to save it. So off the turnover, it's a side out of bounds here for UO. Start inside, he hit. Get for a travel, we can play on. On the end line, good save there. Jesse does the job in transition. There is the defense of Grant Nelson. Excited about him in Tuscaloosa. He was on the game day graphic to open up this tournament. North Dakota product, a big part of this Alabama team. Zuela lost it. Tide rolling the other way. Estrada. And Nelson had a chance. Tied up. Ball. Arrow favors the duck. Coach Altman doing a little coaching there. Going to have to do a lot of coaching to keep this Oregon team in contention while the big men are out with the injury for the next several weeks. Jesse takes a seat. He's been hyper involved lately. Double figures in three straight and attempted 15 field goals in that game against Santa Clara. With the injuries, he shouldered a lot of the usage rate. Good swing. Colome hit. Great ball movement by Oregon. The last two possessions, really. Finding the open man, knocking him down. Woo hoo 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 hoo! Pringle showcasing the offensive improvement. High percentage on the catch and the flush for Mr. Pringle. Looking good early. Inside, he has been aggressive. What they need to do that the Ohio State guards did, they were just kept attacking and playing physical with the ball. That's what it says. Kwame Evans can't believe it. Miley Griffin did the job. That'll take us under 16. Keyshawn feeling it. The Oregon Ducks have a four point lead at the first media. 10-6, the start for the Oregon Ducks. This Alabama offense, so, so good. And, and no matter how you want to slice it, these guys know how to score the basketball. Absolutely, you can see the, the rankings there. Number one offense by Ken Palm. Effective field goal percentage, number one in the country. Number one in points per game at about 97 a clip. Number one in the SEC, and this is their best offensive start since the 50s. So historic stuff for the Alabama offense. Historic is absolutely the right word for it. And especially off a year like last year, there could be concerns for a letdown. You're replacing four starters, but Nate Oates has continued to turn this thing into a factory in Tuscaloosa. Four consecutive top 15 signing classes, and the Tide once again a top 20 team, even after last night's defeat at the hands of Ohio State. Wara gets it to go. Mohamedou Diawara's first point. Fellow with a hook. Effective. by Ryland Griffin. Finding their footing. Three makes in a row from the field for UO. 
Offense will be a premium for Oregon. If they're shorthanded and missing a couple of their top scorers, they're going to look for the hot hands, see who they can ride and hang with this LFM offense. Three ball is good. Hart only had three points against Santa Clara. He was due for a bounce back game. He's got it to start. Swat it away. Kusnard the rejection. Performance on both ends. Sears for the rack. Denied. Scrum for it. Nelson fighting. He got the initial cut. And Alabama walked down. You mentioned Kusnard. He was somebody with their kind of in at to pick up some of the scoring slack. You know, he has great ability to score the basketball at I think 12 or 13 points a game. Um, but definitely now with the injuries and the loss of productivity, he's a guy they're looking for to step up. Didn't necessarily feel the stat sheet yesterday, but definitely has the ability. He started them all in open. Ah. Oregon timeout, just a 30 second pause to try and talk it over. Well, it's maintained possession. Ah. Last night against Santa Clara, they started very slowly. Santa Clara got out to a good size lead early. They kind of came back, and I think it was a little bit of them hiding themselves with this new rotation and new way to play. Got the putters out. Out of the pause, Ducks retain possession. With the injuries, man, if you had to pick somebody to figure it out, a 13th year head man may very well be it. As we head the other way on a miscue from Shelsnat, one of three active coaches with 26 straight winning seasons, the three time Pac 12 coach of the year, and over 700 career wins. Injuries, nothing he hasn't dealt with before. Punched away in transition, the way, and two. Yards on fire to start. <laughs> Great start for Oregon here. You know, at Alabama, Coach Oates can't be pleased right now. They're a little lax believable, not matching the energy right now of Oregon. Baseline, Jimmy stays home for Aaron Estrada. Aaron, another guy coming off a career high in minutes, 33. And one of his best scoring outputs of the season, 19 against the Buckeyes. Hook away. Hide in transition. Walters goes off to that left side. They tried to throw it to him. Rigsby saw it. Rigsby open floor. Look out. Oh, and he couldn't hit it. Just enough pressure from the tide. Chaotic run of play. Three ball from the corner. Whistle first. I believe that's a step out of bounds. 13, 14 to go. Oregon gets the ball back. That's what these two teams can do, man. They get running and they are just so fast. It leads to sheer chaos on the floor. It can. I mean, that Alabama is probably hurt a little bit. But Oregon is taking it to them right now, thinking about their own game. Cario Quindo into this game here for Oregon, a physical guard at 6'4. Physical play. That's an offensive foul on a window. Fine line. He likes to play bully ball from that backcourt position. Have to be mindful not to lower the shoulder. Nelson hacked. That's two quick fouls here on the Ducks. Got his second. And Nelson inbound. Tough shot. Doesn't fall. 
window outlets. Tip with a spear off side iron. The down to freshman Jackson Nelspad. That kid Jan. Shellstad in corner pocket. Third opportunity not coming. Got by the trail. Right cell who is fouled by Tracy. Not exactly a clinic and clean, yeah. efficient play right now from either team. We've got some missed shots here past the turnovers. Both teams have that electric energy early here. We'll have to see who's going to be able to settle in and take this home. Right, so we'll inbound here. The tie. Mark Sears kicks out. Three straight away. Can't. Steers, goalie ball underneath from Mark Sears. Sears very adept, finishing around the rim. An undersized guard, really, really good at that. Second team all SEC a year ago. And second on this team in scoring. And this opportunity, he's pushing pace again. Job by Oregon to get back a transition defense. Little Alabama down. Out pass in rhythm and a finish. Milwaukee <laughs> on board for Alabama. Under 12. Back and forth affair. Both teams shoot the ball well in the opening segment of our Power 5 flash. Nineteen sixteen, the early lead for the Oregon Ducks. One, one to watch. UO currently shooting 60% from the field in the early going. Nine of their first 15. And Alabama defense being tested by their friends from out west. Tide will go baseline out of bounds here for Aaron Estrada. And just like that, a miscue by Alabama. This was on Mark Sears. The turnover and Oregon takes over. Expect that offensive foul from the veteran steers. Kula inside. Looked for the windmill find to Evans. Saved it in the corner. Window just running out of time. Shot clock violation. And that right there is the teaching tape that Nate Oates wants to put all over the Alabama facility. Number shot clock of defense. Absolutely. Coming out of the timeout, you knew Morgan had a set ready to go, but well defended by Alabama. Forced a tough shot at the end of the shot clock. So Coach Oates has to be pleased with that stance. Nate Oates, the fifth year head man in Tuscaloosa, sixth NBA draft pick, of course highlighted by number two overall pick a year ago in Brandon Miller. Nelson plus the stat sheet. Yes. Tough runner. Oregon walked foul with the left to come. Start the to rest, but good news for you all, they hold on to the basket. A good, a good aggressive drive. Got the ball off the court quickly before Alabama get into their half-court defense, creating an opportunity. Great action sets up Rigsby, who hits. That is well drawn up on the baseline out of bounds. 
Spears. Turns on the Jets. Vicious Nelson. Initially rejected the screen. Now it's Grant up top. Nelson at the close. Not a bad shot considering. Estrada second next to Rush 21 20. Tracy's inbound, Oregon goes to work looking to push the one point margin. What about the fadeaway there to Evans? Instead, his entry pass comes to Sears. Mark, nice move. He hits the spin, foul first. Had a wide open Aaron Estrada. Sears is so tough with the ball. He's a kinetic bundle of energy, changing pace, changing directions, shifting, floating, passing. I mean, he's just, he's going to make you work, and whoever has to guard him, I do not envy. Front end of the one and one goes for Mark Sears. He was all Mac, 59 games played at a place pretty close to your heart, Doug, Ohio University. Well, you know, he's a bobcat. Oh, you, oh, yeah. <laughs> Huge get for Nate Oates and has been instrumental to this program, and even more so now as one of the bona fide veteran leaders with a ton of collegiate experience. Start. Denied by Nelson, another guy who's played a ton in college. Alabama can't believe it. And Oregon catches a break. A lot of length on the interior for Alabama with Nelson and Pringle. It's tough sledding in there against the long timbers of Alabama. That was certainly a point of emphasis for Nate Oates in this past offseason. Grant Nelson signed out of NDSU. The Tide did not have a player over 6'9". Knew they needed size, length, physicality, and certainly added it. In a preseason all-conference, first team selection. Jawing going on here. But Coach Oates, you know, he, he, was, he was at the University of Buffalo before coming to Alabama, built a, a program up there, has come here and uh, re-energized this program. And his style of play, kids love to play this way. You know, we're gonna get up and down, we're gonna run, we're gonna share the ball. You know, everybody everybody gets to eat here. And that's, uh, you know, kids love that style. So, we'll coach with a little bit of an advantage on the recruiting end of things. It's so funny because you look at the, why did you pick your school and universally for the Alabama players. Why did you come to Alabama? Nate Oates style is one of the first things that you see nearly every time and currently holds true for Mark Sears. Tough runner off the side of the backboard. Sears pushing pace, 2v3, Sears. Thought about the kick, remains here. Last touch by Jackson. Jell Stad. Confident demeanor for Mark Sears. The most efficient player in the SEC entering play here at the ECC. And he's been just as good. Played nearly the full 40 last night, 17 points. Baseline kick still remains with the tie. That's how we go under eight. Alabama will have a little under 20 to shoot and a three point lead. We get back right here on flow. Half 
way home here in this first half. Doug, what have you liked for both these teams thus far? Well, for Oregon, I, I like their their pace and their aggressiveness on offense, trying to get the ball up quickly, trying to attack the Alabama defense. Uh, I think that's been impressive. And, and, and for Alabama, I think it, they've had a couple of half court you know, defensive stances that have been impressive. You know, they're they're moving the ball and trying to figure out this Oregon team, a team that. You know, there's not, they're not going to have a lot of tape on. They've only seen this this group once, I think, at this point. So uh, they're kind of adjusting and adapting, and you're starting to see them, I think, settle into a little bit of a rhythm here. We'll see if uh, UO can take them out of that. It really is a dynamic new look for Oregon, both in the good news and bad news part. The injuries, yes, but Jackson Shellstad did make his debut last night. Eight points, 15 minutes. So a super talented freshman adding to the arsenal for UO as right still has right still enjoying his time on Florida's Gulf Coast season high in points last night smooth take right there Tracy turns around, sent away. McGee in space, hands it off, and Grant Nelson finishes. An 8-0 Alabama run over 90 seconds of basketball. Outstanding transition look. Nelson finishes. Terrific athleticism from Nelson. And as you mentioned, uh, Alabama explosive offensively. You, know, you, you blink and suddenly a uh, two-point deficit becomes a ten-point deficit. Oregon has scored in over three minutes. If you do that against this Alabama team, you will find yourself in trouble in a hurry. Curl, three ball, short. Yaguara, who is out. Amadou Diawara back in the Sunshine State. Four years at Stetson in Deland, Florida, much more central to the state as opposed to here. The very tip of Florida's panhandle. by the way, is on Ahmed Wagi. Referee there is Jeff Anderson. Solid referee, great experience with the D1 level. This has been a wonderfully officiated tournament from the word go. Stars Mula continuing to find ways to make it happen for Oregon. Off takes, swatted away. Oquindo got a piece. Yeah, the Oregon did not acquiescing at the net at all. We've seen a lot of contested shots at the rim from Oregon. Alabama certainly trying to exploit potential weakness there, but Oregon not backing down early here inside. After the block, the foul was on McGee, his second. Zula's pass inside leads to a smooth pew. The Oregon Ducks answering back now. A little bounce pass to the cutter. Action, two man action there. One quick ones for a window, working around the perimeter. The youngster hits. Dan Walker is downtown. To 
Answer. Oh, yes. High level basketball. Freeze exchange as Gustard hits again. Gustard stepping up with the scoring in this game as we expected he needed to. They have about five of their last six. Oregon, three of their last three. The offensive Palooza continues here with Estrada. He steps back, drilled it. Aaron Estrada from downtown. Big time shot by Estrada. Cousinard had his hand in his face, but no matter. Estrada off with a challenge, knocks it down. But he entered the transfer portal out of St. Peter's. The very first call he got was from Nate Oates. You can very clearly see why. High low. War up. Nowhere to go. Straight away three. Bang. Morgan's done a great job of stemming any kind of flow that Alabama's trying to get into with keeping this lead or this deficit, I should say, manageable. Nearly tied up there. UO is still fortunate to have position. Oquindo, heat check. Not just yet. This is five on four. Untied shoe. It's UA numbers. They can't capitalize. As I said, Oregon, you know, they got down by eight. It looked like Alabama might go on one of their runs and put some distance. But Oregon uh, got a little space at the other end. It's been knocking down their open shot. Great defense on the other end on the power play. Keeps us at 36 to 32. A fun one here. Sam Walters hits the three. Aaron Estrada gets going from range. And the Tide lead by four here. At Bama by a couple of buckets here with 3.41 to go until halftime. You get a look at that Oregon huddle. And Altman at the center of it. Oregon stayed in striking distance that entire game against Santa Clara. Just a late run by SC made the difference. You all will try and return that favor to Alabama. Meanwhile, the Tide liking where their offense is at. Right inbounds, back underway. Zula nearly lost it. Good defense by Estrada. Running out of time. Long two. Kusnard hits it anyway. Big time bucket by Kusnard at the end of the jack block. They said that just a little bit of space for these Oregon shooters, and they're knocking them down. His season high is 14. He's got 13, and we're not even at halftime. Tied up. Jump ball. Favors Pema. There you go. Just enough simultaneous possession. Kuznard almost had it. Bad beat for Oregon there. Nelson operating from the wing. Grant got him on the up and under, couldn't finish. Yuara does the job. Nice job by Nelson getting deep in the paint there, but as I mentioned, couldn't get it to go. Usnard will now have his new season high. Wow, Cousinard is shooting the lights out right now for Oregon if they take the lead. Another guy who feels like everybody on this Oregon roster has overcome injuries as Sears hits. That concussion protocol in the preseason dealt with injuries last year as well, missing 14 games. But he's healthy and he's ready and raring right now for the Oregon Ducks. All the while, Mark Sears not to be outdone. It's 
Oxnard off the handoff. Felt like he can't be stopped, doesn't get the rim lock. Stevenson, another of the great newcomers the freshman has to do. Big time play for Jaron Stevenson. Coast to coast. North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year, maybe sparking this run from Bama. Griffin. Tips remains with the tide. Jaron Stevenson, young player, he reclassified, graduated a year early. Can't tell it right here. Griffin for the travel instead. The whistle comes the other way, and UO gets exactly what they were hoping for. After the shuffling of the feet, Bama gets it right back. And Sears is fouled to boot. One and one for Mark Sears. Yeah, threw out a little full court pressure there. Didn't look like Oregon was organized enough to handle it. And it results in the turnover. Great tenacity by Sears. Did a good job to establish in the front court as well. Not have the over and back. And one of the best free throw shooters in the Southeastern Conference last year goes to the line for one and one. Now three for three, nearing 90% on the campaign. Coach Altman discussing with the referee whether that was an over back or a backward violation by Sears. I don't think he had full possession before the ball went into the backcourt, so the referee's got that one right. Quick 13 points for Mark Sears. The freshman, Shellstad. You always going to need that down the stretch with these injuries. They'll look for some big contributions for their newest addition. Strada, nice find. Griffin's three is good. Terrific play by Estrada. A lot of players, when they get double teamed like that, have a tendency to kind of put their he put their head down and become ball focused, but he kept his head up, found his open teammate for a good look and a splash for three. Under a minute to go. UO's got a little two for one opportunity if the Ducks want to press. They're thinking just that. Tracy. Iwara earned his guys a second chance. Tracy again floats and hits. Alabama will call a quick time here for 24 seconds remaining. One of the best offensive coaches in our game. What does he have in store here? The final shot. Alabama works the perimeter. Cut inside. High off the glass for Ryland Griffin. Freshman who could certainly help in Mookie Cook, unavailable. The only good news on their injury front, the return of Jackson Shellstad. Still, you play the games in front of you. It's got Alabama up by eight. Out in the air, and one. Jesse Zarzula starts strong for the Ducks. Like his toughness with the ball, not afraid of contact, uses the contact to his advantage. You mentioned the uh, lack of bigs on the Oregon side with some injuries, but you know Alabama's not changed the way they play. It's been their guard, Sears and Griffin and Estrada, who've been filling up the scoring column for Alabama, so they've continued about their business as usual. 
Hard driven team, but this could certainly help the cause. Get Grant Nelson involved. Now, a favorable matchup inside. Nelson catches it close to the basket. Pretty easy work for him if they get that close. Zula attacking inside. His dish finds Barthelemy offline. A great effort by Grant Nelson, but just kind of turned into a little bit cool. You throw the ball right at him, but it did the job. And Estrada turns it over. Sears helps side, three ball. It's time for Evans, and Sears eventually clears. Nice soft touch, good looking stroke there for Evans. Couldn't get it to go, but it's certainly showing his game inside and out. He has some ability and some serious upside. Hey Evans, the freshman, Baltimore, Maryland. Huge piece for Coach Altman in Oregon. Slipping, but a foul first. First foul this half on Oregon. And a shot clock pad for Alabama. Tracy couldn't reach in at the tie up there on the drive, but there again, you know, the Alabama guards getting into the paint and wreaking havoc. Oregon's got to do a better job of protecting the paint, keeping that ball out of that painted area. That's Tracy's third. He fouled out yesterday. And Aaron Estrada taking advantage of the extra space underneath. Another foul by the basket. Bam will pick up their second as a team. There's a look at Strata smooth think. Work. Nice work with the pivot foot by Estrada in the paint. He's a crafty player. We've seen him knock down threes. We've seen him making some great assists. And we see him finishing at the rim there. And that right there is a sight you despise if you're rooting for Oregon. Really anybody in college basketball, but Zula a little shaken up there. That is an all too familiar refrain for this Ducks team and their fans. Certainly hope it's just minor. Yeah, he was limping a little bit in that first half. Look at ankle, maybe. Nice take there by Kwame. Mentioned KJ originally from Baltimore had to head down to Montverde in Florida because of the COVID pandemic. The guys were taking the prep school route a lot anyway, but the events of 2020 certainly precipitated it even more. And it feels like across college basketball, we see more players who went through the prep tree simply because high schools across America weren't playing basketball in 2020. Well, preps across the country have become more and more prevalent. Absolutely. You know, it, on the basketball scene, I and mean, if you look back 15, 20 years ago to where it is now, it's, you know, and there's a lot of belief that, you know, your, your clearest path to playing as a professional is, is, has become through a prep. Um, as you mentioned earlier today, certainly a lot of players in the public side of things uh, can get to where they need to go to and reach their goals, but the prep school route has definitely become yeah. A real avenue for players to get to that next level. Jackson Shellstad on the Oregon side is the other side of that story. Seemed like he was going to go to a prep school. He really thought he was. He decided to finish things out at West Lynn High School. 
Guy who's taken a lot of pride being from Oregon, about Oregon, goes to the University of Oregon. And also from the high, same high school as UO great Peyton Pritchard. Those two, a really close relationship, and that's certainly music to the ears of Ducks fans. Anything close to the Peyton Pritchard success is welcome in Eugene. Dad was battling a knee injury all season. Until last night, he made his debut. Now, it's KJ to the line. Kwame Evans, Jr. Alabama faithful. Not happy with the series of calls here going against their team. No. Another nice job by Kwame. You can see the upside here you know, for this young freshman, six foot nine, great length. His body is you know, starting to fill out a little more. It's only going to help him if he gets, get, him, get him to the next level. Terrific prospect for sure. NBA aspirations for the five star. Now his guys trail by seven. A five hour drive from Tuscaloosa, Alabama to here in Niceville. Plenty. Tide Faithful made the trip. Nelson earns his team a second chance. It's Kit Estrada. We've seen a lot from Estrada. As this game goes on, the more and more impressed I become with that young man. I used the word crafty earlier. He is extremely crafty. Nobody knows more about the Oregon Ducks on that Alabama team than Aaron Estrada. He played nearly 30 games for UO. Now, tied Crimson. Second chance, good for Alabama. Great hustle there by Kuznar. Got the block at one end and hustled the other end. Benefited cleaning up the miss. Start gets it in front of that Bama defense. Oregon hanging by seven. And a foul. Evans thinks he's straight up. That is the third on KJ Evans. And front court depth is at a premium for Oregon with these injuries. You could make the argument that is the player that Oregon can most ill afford to lose at this juncture. Well, one of those things you talk about as a coach or team defense, you know, he's he's fouling in certain situations because he has to help. He's helping out another man who didn't do their job, and you're putting your, your bigs, your help defenders in a bad position that way if you're not defending at the point effectively. That's sometimes uh, the consequences of that. Great inbound defense. Where's the timeout? That's certainly what Alabama strives for. 16.02 to go. Alabama Crimson tied up by nine. The Tide led by eight at halftime. That lead growing ever so slowly. It's that one surge really by Mark Sears stands as the difference right now. Great inbound defense, forced the UO timeout. And so Oregon goes for the home run, and they got it. A dinger to the right side, and Bartholomew converts. Terrific action there by OU to get the runner down the court. Great job out of the timeout. From unable to get it in to nearly the full length of the court. A 
tale of two extremes, though that's a reach in on Keyshawn Barthelemy. And that brings us to the under 16. We had the floater at 16.01. So extended coaching right now for Dana Altman and Nate Oates. Functionally back-to-back -back media timeouts with Bama up seven. Against them. Phenomenal matchups. And here we got an SEC Pac-12 clash with Alabama and Oregon representing extremely well. Action on the inbound. Emma gets another chance. Sears cuts. And phenomenal defense by Oquindo. Wins Oregon the basketball. SEC v Pac 12. One final time. After this, the entire West Coast completely changes as conference realignment takes center stage. Offensive foul takes us the other way. You never know. It could be an NCAA tournament matchup down the line. For now, the last meeting between these two in the current setup. And the conference of champions, much to the chagrin of Bill Walton and the many others. Right. Not gonna look quite the same next year. A lot of folks will be sad to see it go, that's for sure as Sears hit. As it sits right now, there's only two teams in it. Washington State and Oregon State. Meanwhile, Alabama will be staying at their current residence, the heart of the SEC, of course, but adding some new neighbors in Austin and Norman. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Big, obvious play on the football side of things, but those are two great basketball programs Absolutely. entering the SNC as well. Fun to watch. Especially as they come in with Alabama at the height of their powers between last year and now. You imagine there'll be some pretty quick budding rivalries. It's going to be it's like a new chapter in college basketball. I think about the Big Ten as well. And how yeah. stacked and loaded that's going to be. It. That's going to be some great action. Great action here, though. Oregon great. hanging around. Buckeyes showcased their form on this floor last night. Right now, Oregon, as you said, they've kept it right around this range. Somewhere between seven and nine throughout. Whistle first. Baseline out of bounds here for the tie. This is like Yawara. That is his third foul. Both the primary bigs, three fouls on them for the Ducks. Sears playing a little ISO. Had the cut there. The youngster Stevenson couldn't handle it. From the corner, Nelson clears. Sears fouled on the way in. We've seen a couple of Sears lasers uh, to cutting teammates or teammates in the corners bounce off their hands, and that's something that. Teammate says, time goes on, playing with Sears will get more and more accustomed to handling the velocity yeah. of passes from Sears. Had four assists last night against Ohio State. That number likely to continue to grow. Front end goes for Mark. Been remarkably consistent. His last four games, scoring category. 24-17, 24-17. So if numbers never lie, Mark's due for a 24-point game here this evening. He's off to a great start. That's his 17th. Aquindo, strong take to the rack. 
job by Aquendo attacking that ball screen and heading downhill with a good finish. And Mark's ears allowed to retort. Guard. Be the foul called. Big time opportunity for Oregon again, trying to keep this thing within a few possessions. Years exchanging drives at each end there. Window's such a physical player. Very used to SEC competition. One of the best players in the SEC in 2021. And a 33 point game for the Bulldogs of Georgia. He scored more in a single game that year in the Southeastern Conference. Also helped immediately integrate himself with his teammates. Wayne Gusnard coming over from South Carolina. A pair of former SEC foes turned friends and now against the common rival, Alabama. Oregon hasn't been able to break through this seven-point barrier. Something going to stop. Nope. That'll continue to be an issue for him. We'll throw right to Bell right back on the board. Not too many, as I said, too many drives into the paint by these Alabama guards. Creating opportunity for the tie. Right, Sell's got five. Other oh, tough takes on Zula. Looked healthy, but the physicality of Alabama won there. Estrada took a chance, hit. Aaron Stevenson right back at it. Stevenson getting more and more playing time. Good career high for the young freshman was last night, 25 minutes. Could be a huge piece. Fans in North Carolina were not happy. He decided he'd be taking his talents to Tuscaloosa. Aquindo the other way, leans in, gets the contact, and one. Great job by Oregon and Aquindo. You see the outlet pass. Aquindo adjusts his body just enough. He avoids the charge. Two for two start from the line. And for 22 on the campaign. Skosh under 50%. And one buried. Set that catch up off the lob. Instead, Oregon pushing pace to the corner. That's your tempo here. Rigsby's up top. Go to him. Good job by Alabama. Going back in transition defense, forcing Oregon into their half court set. Rack poked out by Ryland Griffin. From behind a foul on. AJ Evans, his fourth. We go under 12. Dana Altman might have to start getting creative in the front court. Alabama with speed and energy up by eight. The Oregon Ducks returned seven players from last year, three of whom were starters. But right now, it's going to be new faces. New places. The 13th year head man as Alabama continues to force the action underneath. And Oregon 
having to work with 16 combined fouls in this ball game. Yeah, it's become tougher and tougher inside for Oregon as this game has gone on. Right now, Alabama last check had a 29 to 17 rebound advantage over Oregon. So Oregon was acquitting themselves pretty well for that first half. Numbers were pretty even, but Alabama is just proving to be a little too much on the glass for Oregon. The extension of that rebound margin largely tells the story of our contest. Second chance points, 21 for Alabama, nine for Oregon. Bellamy, guarded by the youngster Walters. Usnard drives the baseline, dishes, and the sweet reverse for Diawara. Diawara. Oh. <laughs> little contact there, but Diawara, I, you know, Kwame was, Kwame Evans playing a lot of minutes here in the second half. He's just kind of a different player, obviously, physically, than Diawara is. So the move to Diawara here, get a little more physical presence inside. Let's see if that stabilizes things a bit. Great pass by Kusinard sets up Diawara. Behind roll belongs to Aaron Estrada. Diawara so comfortable with this Oregon team, in large part because of a guy who's not playing today, in Folly Dante. World Cup together, same host family. They've known each other for over a decade. Always nice when you go from to land Florida to the West Coast, have somebody already know. Three ball, corner pocket. Cleaned up by Latrell. Jaron looking for help, finds Luttrell. Here's right cell. Aggressive play, draws the block. That's on a window. That'll be his third. Luttrell, right cell, the aggressor. This will be the final one and one for the tie. Great sell, a perfect two of two. At the risk of jinxing Alabama, they have been outstanding from the line in this game. They would stand it. 16 of 17 now, about 95% for Nate Oates' team. That is fundamental basketball at its finest. Bellame, great speed, ran his guy off the line. Good finish. Griffin, the other way, and he's fouled. Ryland Griffin's had a great game. Already set a new season high, closing in on a career high 16. He's got 13 two free throws pending. Griffin's a really good looking young player. 6'6, six, six, good length. Has a really good feel and touch on the offensive end. His most free throws made in a game previously was four. This could be his seventh. It is. Nate Oates was extremely happy with Ryland last night, praising his defense in a game in which Alabama didn't do what they wanted to on that end of the floor. Griffin was the bright spot, according to his coach. Continues to grow into the role figuratively and quite literally. Growing an inch this past offseason and adding 10 pounds. And now becoming more and more of a vocal leader and a producer on the stat sheet. 
as I said before, he's got great length as a defender, active hands. He's got speed. He's twitchy. He's got to show and develop the ability to guard guards at a higher level. If he's got thoughts of getting to the next level, playing as a pro, he's got to be able to show physically that he can hang you know, with physical guards and defend. And so far, so good. Snard can't hit on the front end. There, that free throw disparity continues to manifest. Griffin, good find. Estrada hits. Alabama going into the big lead now. Their largest of the game with under 10 to go. I can't say enough about Estrada here today. He has been fantastic on the offensive end. points last night, 16 now, 35 and counting here in Niceville, Florida for Aaron Estrada. Yawara got him in the air and shoot two. This could potentially end a 9-0 run for the Tide. There's Estrada just saw the excitement and the energy after knocking that shot down, but you saw the control and the pace on the catch and the rise in the organization and the shot. And that's a great trait and a great characteristic of great players. They're able to speed up and slow down at the right time during their game. One of the top scorers amongst active players anywhere in Division One, Hamstringing his old team, Diawara and company. Try and mount a late comeback. Two free throws certainly aids. Baseline reverse cleared by Diawara. Outlet, Rigsby. Guarded tightly by Estrada. They switch that off. It's Rigsby dishing. Patient possession here for Oregon. Rigsby shoots and converts. So comfortable in this building. He was a national champion with Northwest Florida State College. A little off on the deep ball that time. All the while, Alabama not off a beat. Aaron Estrada. Estrada again taking advantage of the miscommunication of the Oregon defenders. Both players went with the ball handler. Nobody went with the screener. A wide open shot for Estrada. 19 points on back-to-back -back nights now for Aaron Estrada. Zula's kick leads to a three from the wing, and there it is. Oregon much beats it. Brennan Rigsby once again delivers in Niceville. Lifted the feet. That brings us to the under eight timeout. The number one offense in America, according to Ken Palm, and the leaders in effective field goal percentage. They do that with threes. They're doing it right now behind Aaron Estrada. Grant Nelson loving every bit of it as well. And that's got to bode particularly well for Alabama on a night in which Grant Nelson has six points. You are leading against Power 5 competition, a very good Power 5 team in that, though hampered by 15, speaks to the depth of this Alabama offense. Absolutely, so many weapons at Nate Oates' disposal. And also just the way they play, with the pace that they play, it just creates a lot of open opportunities, open driving lanes for multiple players. So guys have an opportunity to fill it up. We talked about how much kids love to play in this style. It's a lot of fun and everyone can reap the rewards. Rigsby. On the Jets, nearly lost it. Good find, baseline. Jimmy stays home for Bartholomew. Sears 
and one. Yeah, Sears is a tough matchup for Kuzanard. Kuzanard is up for the challenge. Good physical on ball defender, but Sears just a step too quick for Kuzanard on that drive. This is actually what Alabama was most attracted to when they saw Sears in the portal. They noted his foul rate, ability to get to the free throw line. Not something you necessarily think about, but obviously pivotal in college basketball. And he's got seven for seven from the free throw line. To emphasize that particular aspect on the scouting report, it's worked well for Alabama. He's so quick, shifty, uh, just a tough, tough mark for a defender. I can see why that number is high for him. Grant Nelson got a piece of that. Estrada turns, Nelson fires. Left it a bit short. Three ball. Second chance for the Ducks stays home. Jackson Shellstad. His first points here this evening. Estrada. Rare miss. Trying to work their way back here. Jackson Shellstad back to back. Mr. Oregon in his prep career. Hoping to drive the hometown team. Nelson, big time board. And Aaron Estrada goes to the line again. Crafty, the word I used earlier on Estrada, and he showed his craftiness there. A Euro step, got past the defender, then a Euro step past the help defender, and he gets himself to the line. Fouls on Rigsby. That's one of the ones that's okay here for Oregon. That's just his third. lead here. Oregon still with life. Plenty of basketball left to go with 518 left. They've got to generate some stops and play efficiently on the offensive end. Easier said than done to slow down this Alabama team. But both Absolutely. squads still shooting over 50% here in the ball game with five to go. accelerates and gets it to fall. That's 22. Big time move. With a little English on the finish. Nice play. Three from the way is good. Alabama give it up nothing. Mark Sears, a 25 piece here in his second game at Niceville. Sears with a little bit of a hurt and skip to his right and he knocks it down. Outlet comes the other way. Here's Grant Nelson swatted from behind. Ariel Quindo and easy on the other end for Jackson Shellstad. That's what it has to look like for Oregon to make this comeback. Ducks in a rhythm for their last five. Need the defense. Ryland Griffin can't hit. Through, had a guy fall down, kind of messed up the rhythm, except it didn't. Just like that, this is a nine point game again. Let's stop, make, stop, make. And they just did a little five point burst for the Ducks. Jackson Schnellstad, one of the most famous Oregon prep players. Just his second game for the Ducks. Cousinard has set the table, and Jackson Shellstad taking over in line for new career high, game number two. In 
knew it wasn't going to be that easy. Alabama led by nearly 20 with eight minutes left in this ball game. Then in the ensuing four minute segment, the Oregon Ducks go five of six from the field and now have it down to a single digit game again. Still a long way to go, but a thrilling finish in our final game and the third of four here at the Emerald Coast Classic. Here's Aaron Estrada. Just a few points off his best scoring game as a member of the Alabama Crimson Tide. And factoring in quality of competition, I think it's fair to say. This is the best game that Aaron Estrada has had since coming to Tuscaloosa. Shellstad, heat check. Second opportunity does come for the Ducks. Emma firmly on a hundred watch here with 3.37 to go. Another look, you can see Nelson and Estrada last touch. Ball is good. Next, Chelstad. It is his best game as a member of the Ducks. He's doing everything he can right now. What a job by Dana Altman to keep this youngster at home. Right cell. Denied by Diawara. This feels like a huge possession for Oregon. Inside, second chance. The Awara to put back. Morgan's early, a little something cooking here. Got it down to six. Griffin bounce pass. And one, Grant Nelson. Morgan playing their best basketball here in this second half and the North Dakota State transfer. Relatively quiet today, comes up with a clutch mate. You said it, it's been quiet, but here in a big moment, it goes through the pressure, or through the contact, excuse me, and finishes strong. That is just shot, Grant's second to make of the second half. Saving his best and opening up here at the close. Still a nine point lead for Alabama. Baseline drive, strong kick, and there's the answer. Mario Quindo goes to the line. Quindo here, a little catch, little ball fake, low by. Above the rim with the finish. He's had a couple of great plays defensively, too, in the last few minutes. A couple of big blocks at the other end of the floor. He is filling it up for Oregon and keeping them within striking range. No hit. Hard away. Best scoring game he's had at the University of Oregon. Nelson. Trying to take it over, gets help now. Riley Griffin. Speaking of career highs at your current school, that's a new one for the sophomore, 17. The window and it stays. Gustard's been outstanding. It really has. I feel like Oregon has found a little something in terms of who can step up over these next couple weeks with some production missing due to injury. Prisoner is answering the call today. Sears goes to the line and shoots two. That now going to be the Ducks with number nine, Keyshawn Bartholomew. That'll be his second. Keyshawn Bartholomew. 
Heading to the line for the Crimson Tide, number one, Mark Sears. Sears just continuing to, to sh continuing to, to show his ability to get downhill and just, just a tough, tough matchup. He's just been so locked in. Five games now. Stretch goes 24, 17, 24, 17, 27. And that 27, a new high watermark for Mark Sears. Career high is getting set all over the place in this game. Look the feet, and you can hear the tide rising now for Alabama. Tough turnover in that spot. Good call, though, by Jeffrey Anderson, who's now definitely gave him the hook with the offhand as he tried to make his turn. Right in front of the referee. Morgan tried to set the trap. Nope. 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 Back and come. Sears ain't happy about it. It's an offensive foul on Alabama. Must make pretty much every time down the floor now for the Ducks. off Shellstad. Oh, and Barthelemy couldn't handle it. Bad beat for Oregon, and the Tide can take about a third of what remains in this contest. Oregon will play it straight up. Sears. Blow by, but the final block belongs to Aquindo. Another acrobatic block by Aquindo. Smart defense. He forced Sears to his right and trailed him and knew he was going to finish with his left. Smart play by Aquindo. Nate Oates calls timeout with four seconds left on that shot clock. Draw up a quick little inbounds play. Alabama probably going to cross 100 here. One of the nation's best on offense, doing the job again. Imagine, which we'll talk about the defense, conceding probably 90 plus at this point, on 54% shooting. But at the end of the day, this is a results business. And it's now barring something special, Alabama will get that result. Going one and one here at the Emerald Coast Classic and picking up a quality win for the resume against the Oregon Ducks. Uh, you have to learn. Much rather it come in a victory. Uh, I think Oregon has found out a lot about themselves in this last game, game and a half or so. Altered lineup due to the injuries that we've touched on several times tonight. But I think Dane Altman's kind of getting a vision of what this team can look like on how they can play going forward. But, you know, really two quality efforts. They lost to Santa Clara last night. Santa Clara's a good basketball team. And Fair. certainly acquitted themselves decently here and hung with Alabama. I mean, they're going to score 90 points against Alabama, which Coach Oates who talked about the defense and how he was not happy with the output that Ohio State put on him last night. Probably not going to be thrilled with giving up 90 to Oregon. Look at Dana Altman. His guys continue Power 5 competition. Both these teams do. Oregon will host Michigan on Saturday. The next three in Eugene. They begin Pac-12 play one last time. December 28th, hosting the Trojans of USC, uh, check on which direction the arrow is pointing, that way. Alabama goes to the ACC-SEC Challenge hosting Clemson, coming up on Tuesday. Relatively quick turnaround here for Coach Oates' team. And they've got quite the travel. As 
That one, well defended by Quindo. Made here, though. Oregon desperately wants to jump ball. So Alabama stays relatively close to home. Coming here to Niceville, Florida. They go to Toronto, Phoenix, Birmingham, much closer to that home, before eventually beginning SEC play on January 6th in Nashville against Vanderbilt. The Road Warriors, certainly. It's Crimson Tide. Nelson couldn't save it. Window. And Sears outlet the other way. Estrada to Nelson. Nelson put the hole. Here's the exclamation point. Strata with the unselfish play, giving it up to Nelson, giving the two points to his teammates. I think Okenda was shaken up at the other end on that last possession for Oregon, which may... Yeah. Again, for this Ducks team, which quite frankly might be the unluckiest team in Division One from an injury standpoint these last couple of years, you certainly hope for the best. So Azula has been getting, Ken reading it out. Kendo now heads to the locker room. Mario Quindo has had a nice day. Yeah, he's been a big piece of, really, he, he plays a lot bigger than he is because of his athleticism, his power. Um, he's really played a, a good role for them on the interior with his physical play. He's blocked several shots. Hopefully he'll be able to shake that off and back to normal for the next game. Three guys missing today. Rigsby's dealt with injuries. Gusnard has. Barthelemy has. Number one for Oregon is going to be get healthy. Right now, that's slated to be around January or so. Barring something else. Jackson Chelstad couldn't quite hit. Stevenson worked across the timeline to right cell. That does it. The Alabama Crimson Tide split their trip at the Emerald Coast Classic, and now back, moving to five and one, picking up an exceptional win against the Oregon Ducks. And meanwhile, four visitors from Eugene, 90 plus against a top 20 team, even shorthanded, an elite effort by both teams. And this game certainly lived up to the billing. A really fun one for us here at Flow. We hope you enjoyed it as well. Both teams shoot over 50%. Alabama gets it done though. Second chance points, 24 to